Should have. Should be live. We will get started here. Make sure everybody can see us and configured. We should be good to go. It's going to be a pretty quick tutorial on the new multi miner. And we're going to kind of go through just a quick cradle to grave on it. I was going to do this as a separate episode, and I figured that we would just go through the main components of the multi miner. I'll walk through on how to set it up, how to download it, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll have a small part at the end, maybe some questions and that. I think that'll help if people ask questions. I do not have the chat on the screen on purpose because most of this video is going to be just a tutorial. Um, but we do have Miss BBT here in the background and we will get some questions answered towards the end. So if you do any super chats or anything like that, I'll do all that at the end. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the Multiminer 5.6.1 was released today. And if you are just running into this video and you're just like, well, I don't have a mining rig, this really will work with anything. Anything that has windows on it and has a graphics card as long as, as depending what you're mining, um, some things won't work, some things will, depending on the graphics card and the amount of RAM it has. But this is gonna be a tutorial for anybody that wants to use or even try to have their PC do some mining. So what we're gonna do is navigate to Bits Be Trippin' Dot com. That's going to come up to our site and down here at the bottom we're trying to have this uh, bottom line up front section. Think of this kind of like a little blog where we'll put uh, kind of key stories around the mining scene. Um, we'll have that and on this right down here you have it's one of the newer blogs so it's right here November 10th. That's the one you'll be selecting. If you find this video later on and you don't see anything down here because it's uh, in the future. Then up here in resource list, we'll have it listed under here, uh, the latest version of whatever miner. So this video should be pretty close to the same for any version ahead of this until we make a major change and then we'll do another video like this. So this is, takes you to here, which then gives you the link to the actual, we have a Steemit blog, that's where our main blog is. So you can think of that as kind of a pointer. That brings you to the Steemit blog, which Kind of gives you a basic update of what the miner is, some of the fixes. This is the change log, what was removed, what was been added. So you guys can see that. And then a couple download locations. So we're going to just take the Mega, that's kind of the primary one. We're going to grab that. I have not put that on this laptop yet. We're going to come up here, download. It's 155 meg. The reason why it's so big is it has 29 separate miners on it. And we use about, I think, 13 or 14 of them. But I did make sure that we had enough of the other miners out there that kind of covers the entire spectrum of the entire GPU mining scene. So if you do come in here and update, as you'll see here in a little bit, that you can actually add in your own uh, selection to the menu system. We're going to open up this folder. It's still downloading. There we go. It's in the downloads. And we're going to extract this right here in downloads is fine. It's quite a few files. We'll be running it tonight on the laptop. This is a uh, Alienware M17 R4. It uh, has, let's see here. The i7-7820HK, which is an 8-core, well, it's 4-core with 4 virtual, 32 gigs of RAM, and it has a 1080 G GTX inside of it. So it's a pretty high-performance laptop. We should be able to get some good sample testing through it. Now, you might get this to where it's going to take, you can allow this on this device. This is a false positive. It's as part of the XMR miner. If you don't feel comfortable with it, you can keep it as remove. We'll just start actions on that, let it do its thing, because we actually don't use that. We just compiled it from source. Uh, and then that is the 
the thing that was having the issue is right here the TSV XMR miner that's the one that kind of throws a false positive we actually don't use it in the batch file but I have it in there so if you get if you get a false positive on it you can make the choice to either quarantine it or uh, allow it but uh, we have it from a CPU standpoint um, if you want to just mine with CPU uh, but we it is not included inside the multi miner uh, bat, main batch file so it's it's really neutral if you let it quarantine or not so we let that open up it is opened up into the BBT v561 folder and essentially in here compared to the last multi miner we consolidated all the miners underneath the miner folder so you'll see all the different miners out here with all their different version numbers and I tried to keep the actual full thread of the the name the same so you can do some Google searching if you wanted to find some more advanced features or you can click into it and you can read the readme's of each of the miners have a, a readme in each of them so a lot of people get confused on what switches to use they start looking on the web a lot of the miners actually have all the switches and the different commands that you can use inside the readme's inside the folders so all these different settings and fan settings and all these things that you can do with it are actually in there for just your edification. I, we leave all that in there. So if we go back up to the main folder here, you'll see the one that's running everything right here is this BBT Multiminer bat file. To edit that, we need to have Notepad++. So I already have it on this laptop, but we'll go ahead. And, so you download this. The next step that you'll do is downloading Notepad++. You can just Google that or take the link that we had. It's the first link that comes up here, Notepad Plus Org. We'll just re-download it, it's not that big of a deal. And run that. You will you need to use that to edit this bat file. Now, you, there are other tools that can read more advanced bat files if you are inclined to use a different tool, such as Visual Studio or something like that, that works too. So, once you run that, it just opens up. It looks a lot like Notepad. You can close those websites out and then essentially you can drag this bat file over to this and it'll open up so the steps that we've done so far is just download the miner unzipped it and we've pulled over notepad plus plus that allows us to edit this batch file this batch file is what does all the magic that's it this is essentially the multi miner is essentially just a, a bat file so when you open this up the very very first thing that you want to do is depending what you're going to mine if you're going to mine ethereum or if you're in classic or any of these different currencies you want to change this section right here this is where you put your wallet address in so you can go out and download a wallet you can a lot a lot of the exchanges don't want you mining straight to them um so you'll have to get like a jacks wallet or a, a, a few other types of i mean depending which which coin you're going to mine you, you got to find the wallet that's compatible with that coin once you get that you'll get an address and then they'll replace that here so you know we've recommended jacks i use jacks on the on the phone um there's also uh, my ether wallet which is uh, a, a web plugin that goes into chrome you can use that there's just you know there's several videos out there to get wallet addresses um and then you can go in here and you want to replace this so depending which coin you don't have to replace you don't don't have to go out and find a, a wallet address for each one of these it's just the one that you're going to mine is the one that you're going to replace because essentially all of these are our our wallet addresses so if you turn on the miner to do one of these coins it's going to be mining for us so you want to go out there and replace this wallet address so you would just go in find your wallet address copy and paste that over there so that's the first part that you want to do the next part that you want to do is all these things that say set right down here so right underneath this section here you have the minor web login the worker password the minor name and then the email address some of the different pools require different things some of the pools just require the wallet address some of the other pools when you choose a coin will require a minor login which is just essentially the username that you have when you go to the pool so if you go into supernova which is one of the pools and just below this we have all the different pools that are used inside this uh, multi miner you can hit their URLs right here you could take that and go to you know uh, that 
that uh, URL. You can right click and go search on the net, you'll see it, Supernova, you can click that and it'll take you to the pool right here. So for Supernova, you need to be able to log into it. So it's not needing just your, your wallet address, it actually needs a login. So when you go in there and set up that, so if you're gonna use uh, Supernova to mine like SciaCoin, the SciaCoin address is actually gonna be in Supernova. Your web login is what you're going to use for that particular thing. So it all comes down to what you want to mine and then what you have to configure. But by and large, you're going to change your wallet address. You're going to change these to the pieces that uh, of the pool that you're going to be using. And the reason why you have to change them up here is because what we have down here is you'll see if we scroll down, this first set of thing after row 92 here is essentially just the menu that fires up whenever you start the multi-miner. This is just the menu options, which allows us to tie the number to a pointer, which is down here. So when you hit that number, let's say you're gonna hit number 59 to mine Zencoin, it looks down. When you type 59, it looks right here, the next set of code here, it comes down here to 59, and it says go to Zen2 which that's just another pointer that's all the way at the bottom here, which is this Zen2. When I double clicked it, it highlighted it. So the, all the way at the bottom of this, you see Zen2. So that's, you hit the number, which hits the pointer, the pointer comes down to here and then says, okay, go ahead and start this, which then it'll echo this, which means it's just gonna say that, those words, and then it's gonna go find the miner inside the miner folder. It's gonna run that miner, which is the, this, DSTM in this case and then from right here is the part what I'm highlighting is usually what you would just be editing in your batch file so it's actually executing that command and then this particular one's going to, to supernova so it's going to call supernova it's going to the correct port address this is all the stuff that we're doing for you in this we're making sure that these pools are set up right we're making sure that the variables that they're looking for are set up right that's essentially what we're giving to you already pre-set up. All you would need to do is here, right here is to change that web login that's up at the top. That way you don't have to mess with any of these settings down here. You just put your minor web login at the top and your minor name up there, which is the stuff that's right up here. Right here, I just had the minor name highlighted and that's what it was looking for. So if you're changing this and this, you're good to go if you chose that option. On, on that Zen coin because it's essentially going to fire this it's going to look for who your login is and then it's going to do all that stuff for you so that's essentially the workflow is it, and shows you how to navigate the tool to figure out you know if you want to mine a particular thing because then the, the, what most people do is they'll get this download it and they'll just double click this the first time you double click it you have to say yes run it this is what they'll see. They'll see this thing that has all these different options in here. And they're like, huh, that's cool. I wanna mine, you know, Ethereum Classic. And oh, it looks like it's going to Nano Pool, and it looks like this other one's going to Nano Pool and Coin Mine. Well, it's doing ETC at Nano Pool and it's doing Decred at Coin Mine. So you'd have to make sure that you have your correct settings in there for in that particular one that I just used as an example here which was this one here, number 13. I can go down here and look at number 13. Where's number 13 go? Number 13 goes to Ethereum C3. So I scroll down here and if, as long as you have that clicked, you'll see it highlighted to green. So it just highlighted that one for us. It showed us where the pointer was. So this whole string right here is the one that we'd be wanting to make any kind of changes or what we, it gives you at least the idea of what you need to make changes on. So you need to make sure that your ETC wallet's in place, you need to make sure your your miner name is in, is in place, and that your email is in place. If we keep scrolling over, you need to make sure also your SIA wallet was updated. And it's still gonna pull the same miner name and the same email address, because those are both shared. So on that particular one, that's where you would, on NanoPool, you just update your addresses, your miner names, and your email address. And once those are all done and you choose that option, it's gonna go ahead and start mining for you at that. And if you wanna monitor the progress on the mining, that's why we added this section up here, 
where we put all the mining, the, the different URLs for the mining pools. So each of the mining pools are right here and kind of the coins that they, they can take care of. Now, all these coins are not in our multi-miner, but these are the coins that these particular mining pools support. So we wanted to make sure all that was in there too. So like on this case where we were in a nano pool, we can highlight that, right click and do a search on the internet. And then right there's nano pool. So if we went to the root of nano pool, it's gonna bring up the all the different pools here, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Sciacoin, Zcash, Monero, Pascal. So on that one we were using Ethereum Classic, we could go in here and just click this button here which will take you into their pool. And if you were actually mining to that right now, you would see, you could search your address up here and then it would take you to where you're at on this. Right, so if we, we can use this as a demo, um, let's see here, we were using Ethereum Classic, so we're gonna do number 13. And if I hit 13 and enter, it's gonna fire that up. So you can see that it's hitting ETC and the Psycoin. The first time it's always gonna ask you about a Windows firewall, you hit accept on that. If you hit S, you can get updates of the status. So here it is mining. Now this is going to be mining kind of kind of low because this isn't this is an uh, Nvidia 1080. And there's no overclocks or anything set on this. It's just out of the box. If you hit the minus key, you can change the intensity levels. Didn't really change much though from that look. Keep that back at 30. We'll set, I'm going to let this run for a second. And that way you can see it come up on the mining. So what the fastest way is you go open up your your batch file again and you can grab your address. So this is ETC, which is the one down from that. I'm going to copy that because that's the address it's mining to right now. And I'm going to paste it here and hit search. And let's see if it's in there yet. It hasn't, it's, uh, looks like we've had uh, a little bit almost uh, one ETC in there so far. It's still not seen on the pool. So if we'll sit here and let this run for a second, it'll actually, you'll see it pop up on this screen here for nano pool and then we'll also check the side coin pool because it's also, it's dual mining right now. So we're getting 20 mega, 20.9 mega hash, and then 200 mega hash on side. I mean, this is an NVIDIA GPU, so this isn't really optimized for what I just picked, but we'll let there and make sure that you guys can see that, you know, you just put your address in there and search, and then you'll see it start to report here in a second. While we're waiting for that, we'll scroll down and we'll look at some other options here that you can do. So while we're waiting for that to go, we'll let that run and we'll scroll down here and let's say you want to make some changes or add some switches to to one of these different things. Let's say uh, let's let's set the scenario to where you're going to mine Ethereum, just Ethereum, not dual mining, which would be number three, option three. If we scroll up here, you'll see option three is using Claymore's miner for just Ethereum on ethmine.org's pool. And let's say you have an AMD GPU and you want to do all your clock settings here and not have to use something like like afterburner or any of that. You could come in here and you can add switches. And what I say, mean by that is if we come into the miner folder and we go into the Claymore folder, let's go into Claymore, where's 10 at? I just miss it, there it is, 10.1. If I come in here and I look at the readme, we can take these switches here, just down a little bit, right here and start making changes in the line. So what I wanna do is I wanna set the M clock, or the, the core clock. So this is the same stuff that you would do in, like if you had Afterburner. Now this is AMD only also, by the way. So I can grab that, I can copy, I can paste that, so that clock setting, a space, and let's say normal settings would be like 1080, 
the other setting was M clock. That would be the memory clock, and let's say that was if I wanted to set that at 1025 or 2025. And then if I wanted to do also the voltages, right here is the memory voltage and the core voltage for the GPUs, the CVD, CVDDC. So we're gonna paste that in there. We need the minus. And on that, normal is like, uh, a lot of people strive for 900. I would say you're probably a best bet to start with about 975. And then you're gonna want to do the memory also, copy that, space there, and then you could do the memory, let's say at 990. Nor the normal settings on these on most graphics cards, just to give you guys an idea, is like 1050. So what we're doing is saying this would be equivalent to 0.9 volt. So we're going to do 0.95 volt. And then you could set your power limit here too, power limb to let's say negative 10. Now that would be a common setting that I would use on like a uh, RX 570, RX 580, or actually a RX 580 because the mem clock's a little high. Uh, a 570 would be something like 1900 here on the memory side. Uh, the rest of this would stay the same. But you could pass that variable and you know, you come up, after you're done doing something like that, let's say you're done with that, you would hit up here, save. You gotta use that save option. And now that setting, when you run number three, it's gonna pass those variables. Now you could copy that, and you could paste it to any of the other Claymore Miner setups, like this one, let's say the side coin just below this, you can kinda come over here, and you can just add it here at the end. Hit a space bar. Can you scroll that setting down just a little bit more so it's under the box? Yep. If they can see that. There we go. So on this one, it's on number four, where it would be Ethereum and Siacoin. You can use that same set of variables right here at the end, because essentially, when you when you run that miner, it's going to run this entire string. After this executable here, it's going to run this entire string. It goes and looks what's the e pool. That's where the pool is at. Where's the location of the pool? And what's its port number? What's my wallet? Well, that wallet is pointing up to where the Ethereum wallet pointer that's at the very top. And then this pointer is pointing at what's the miner name. And then the next variable is what's the password. And the next one after that is, oh, there's a second pool. There's, this is, you're gonna dual mine, cool. So what's that path? You know, and that's all it's doing is it's going through and it's running each one of these things and passing these variables back you know, there's the Sidecoin wallet, there's the miner name. On the Sidecoin, we have an email address added with this slash here because then that'll email us if the worker goes offline. And then after that, it's given a variable to say, yeah, mine in the Sidecoin, which sets up the algo right, the algorithm right, and then it goes through and looks at these clock settings and pushes the clock settings. Now, these clock settings are only for AMD. So we've been running here now for a little bit. Let's see if... Refresh this. See if we got it hashing yet. Still shows offline. Let me see here. Is this thing actually running? Or did this minor crash? Let's see here. Oops. Not that one. Let's come back here. That miner might have stopped when I when I when I scrolled up the uh the command window, I think I paused the miner. So let's do that again. We were using option 11, 12, let me look here. Scroll up, using option 13. And I'll let that run. I paused the miner, it stopped. It was only running for a minute. Um, and we can check the Sciacoin address. If we go back and look at the top, We come up here and we look for the SIA and then the address right here. So we can right click and copy that. 
we can go back to this is also nano pool I believe you can go back and look and see option number 13 here it is option number 13 is Sai is at nano pool also I'm finding that from right here Sai coin at nano pool so if I go back, back to the main nano pool thing I can go to the Sai coin paste this address in new address search and here we go so it looks like BBT worker there's some uh, we might have one miner on here right now so it's, it's actually showing some of the miners on there but you can see we had some up and downs with Saya here today but that new miner because we're at BBT worker 01 I'm gonna change that in here so you guys can see it we're gonna change it right now at the top of this batch file we're gonna go in here and do worker 02 and save it we're gonna close this and restart it we're gonna go 13 and my as you see all I did is just change up here at the top the worker address so like if you were copying these over if you made if you copy one you make changes to it you put all your wallet addresses in there you make all your changes to your logins your email and your miner name and then let's say you have multiple rigs or you have multiple PCs at home and you're just catching this video and you're like well I have two PCs at home I'll get them both running you can change all your settings in one save that file and then copy that entire folder to the other PC and then it's already configured the only thing that you'll want to change is this worker address if you want to see the two do, uh, independently of each other and the reason why you want to do that is because like let's say you had worker one worker two two different computers they're both going to the same email address but if worker two goes down and you're passing that email address variable you're gonna get an email to say hey this workers offline if you if you had both of them going under the same name work minor name you don't know which one went down that's what it comes down to so that's why you want to separate that if you're putting this multi miner on multiple computers and again I'm, we're using this on a laptop I mean you can mine with about anything um, now it's not recommended to mine on a laptop let me make sure I'm fully disclosing on that because the penalty for failure like if a graphics card or something goes out on this isn't as simple as like just replacing the graphics card you probably have to replace your laptop if you can or because more than likely it's a built on than the system board you know and you got some issues so not recommended to do on a laptop for demo purposes we'll do that but um, if you're doing it in your home PC or any of that you know you can always replace a graphics card um, that being also said I haven't had any graphics cards going out I mean you might have a fan go out of graphics card but this stuff's not from our experience unless you're going way to the extreme and overclocking the hell out of it um, you, GPUs are made to work so if it's still running making sure it is let's go out and let's see if that updated that worker ID on the pool we don't have it yet but we will see it here in a second it takes it, it it takes it so the pool will will update that information usually about every two to three to five minutes depending what pool it is it may take it a few minutes so and then it, your your mega hash that's reported here will also take a little bit I always tell people go four to five hours if you can and then you'll probably get a pretty decent accurate reading of what your what your hash rates on there I mean you could probably get it after 30 minutes but you're gonna get more of an accurate reading uh, after several hours on a pool and it's okay that the pool is reporting a little different than the, what your what your miner is there's a whole bunch of variables that come into play that that the the fact that you're hashing the what the pool cares about is submitted shares against the total shares so you're paid in proportionately to the share count that you have submitted so the hashes are just subsequent the working on things 
the shares being submitted is what your payment's predicated on. And there's where that big difference is. People don't care what your hash power is at the end of the day. It's a matter of how many shares are you submitting. Now, you should be predicated enough hash power. Uh, are you, uh, predicated on how much hash power you have is, is pretty indicative of how many shares you're going to submit. They are, you know, correlated. However, it's not the end of the world if you're off a little on... Uh, if it's off a little or if the, the pool is actually showing that you're getting more hash rate than your computer's reporting because that happens a lot too. People are like, hey, I'm mining and only have, you know, I'm only sending 30 hashes to the pool, but the whole pool says I'm doing 37. That's cool. But what really matters is how many, sh you know, what's the share count? Are you, is your, what's your, uh, how many shares have you submitted versus what the whole total pool has since the last time it found a block? That's what really matters. So that, I was just trying to make sure that that's kind of like a PSA when you're trying to figure out your uh, mega hash against a pool. What really matters is your share count and you know how many accepted shares. So you can see here as I, I move my mouse over here, you know the different amounts of uh, shares accepted, and then the constant line of current uh, hash rate. So let's refresh this again and see if we see this. Still don't see it yet. We're gonna sit here and let this run for a little bit, a little bit longer. How long? It's been running for four minutes. It will show up there. Let's go check the etc. We could just change this etc. Get rid of that account and hit enter. That's okay. We just need the account. It needs the account ID, which is your pool address. Paste that, search. Yeah, it sees it, 17. It's seen it for a second. It just hasn't reported the, uh, the worker yet. We'll let that run. So back to the multi-miner. So none of the other stuff that you'll have to change, just the pool, the, the wallet addresses and the set information's here. Now you could, I'd say, get into the more advanced features of where if you want to put, make a change to this, you have a. Could you restart the miner after you change the name after you leave it? You said that could be why you're not Yeah, we did. Yeah, it should be. Uh... Yeah, I did. And we'll find out real quick whenever I. Uh... Um, because it, it, if I didn't, then BBT Worker One will show up on the on the Ethereum Classic pool. And d am I on the Ethereum BTC? Yep. Okay. Um. So again, if you want to make a change, this is the kind of the section on the change side. If you want to make a change to one of the miners, like let's say. You're like, oh, cool, you added, uh, what's that miner at the end here? You added the DSTM miner. Cool, I wanted to use that. Oh, crap, it's only for Zencoin. Why didn't you do it for this? Well, you could actually go in here and make a change yourself and use a different, you could copy this whole thing right here. Like, let's say this. We'll copy this whole string right here. And let's go up to Zcoin. Our uh, Zcash. We scroll up, and I'm look. What I'm looking at is the pointers here. Ubik, Didix, Library, Hush, Pascal, Sidecoin. Here's Zcash. So let's say I wanted to do this with Zcash, and it's like, well, you know, I didn't want to use the AMD miner here because this is an Nvidia. Let's. I could go right here. Go. What I do is I insert a line, just hit enter at there, come up, paste this. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at this and I'm replacing the stuff up here because I want this address because that's the, that's the, where I'm going.
And you see how on this on this miner, it has the port at the end here with a colon. On this miner, it wants the port here. So you have to come over here and back through this. Hit a space bar. And you want to put the, I don't remember what that, this port here, 66633. Three. And then the wallet here is wallet address. So instead of web login, we're going to be using this piece right here. Copy. And then we don't need any of this other stuff. And this server is not going to want to pass that variable like that. We're just going to have ZEC there. And what we're going to do is we're going to verify this. Now we're going to delete this part up here because we don't need this anymore. Because now we're passing the, the same nano pool. And then on this one, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to change this because it's not NVIDIA only. Or it's not AMD, it's NVIDIA. And it's the DSTM. And I'm going to highlight all that. And what I'm going to do is just change the menu at the top. So that's Zcash 1, which is the first Zcash, which is this one. And I'm going to paste it right there. So now when I, in option 19 now, we'll pass that miner with those settings. I just noticed the port, the password was missing there. Is going to pass those settings now when I choose option 19. So I'm going to hit save on that. I'm going to minimize this. Just refresh this and make sure we see. 25. It's going up, but it hasn't reported it yet. Eventually, that's going to pop up with the worker name, and we'll see it. The hash rate's increasing, though. We're going to go back to, uh, let's do this. So I, uh, search. Yeah, nano pulls, it takes a, it takes a cool minute for the workers to pop up on there. Been mining for 11 minutes. Workers there. BBT. Oh, need to make sure that's one. On some pools, I, that needs to stay the same. Or at least on the, the supernova pool, I have to make sure that the worker name is the same. And then I'm going to rerun this. And we're going to check that number 19 if we scroll up. Now, see, this is showing us an error because I probably have the... I took that SSL off the front and it's resetting the connection. So I'm going to close that, and this is kind of giving you an idea of how you could troubleshoot it. You can come back down here, look at the settings here. Oh, there was no uh, no password requirement there. It was just minor login and that for, for that. On Nanopool, it doesn't require that. 
It's go back up. And this is why having these all pre-configured for you guys, you can kind of see what we go through to make sure that all the settings are right is having to look at that. So nano pool for ZEC Zcash. So nano pool going back to the root of nano pool. Not Ethereum. Zcash. You can go under their help to see, make sure that the, because the ports will change if I'm not using SSL. So for the US one, for Stratum is 666. So I need to make sure that's the one that's in there. And let's go back to Z my Zcash here. So that one is the same, and this is all sixes. And that should be passing that, and it doesn't need the password variable. Save that. Rerun the multi miner, not option 19. Connected. Now it's running. And that's how it's kind of done. So we, there it was where that that option 19 was actually for an AMD running on a different pool and that's how quick we were able to change it. And that's the point to this is what I'm trying to show is that all we're doing is pre-facilitating a list of miners pre-configured with the right syntax for you. You can go in there and make changes. Look at this thing, already almost 500, 500 souls. It's not even overclocked. laptop laptops a beast um but that that's the real rundown of the multi monitor i wanted to make sure that you guys understood on how to to go in there and make change it's setting changes and if you click on here you can see some of the stuff that we had made changes to we added monero vertcoin we're, we're working on an amd version of this i mean there's some updates that we're going to be making to on 5.7 we do offer you guys to go out to Bitsby Trippin com and you know hit our Discord link right here. Which if you haven't had ever been in Discord, you can you know make choose a name. This is a test of BBT. And then that's going to drop you in to, you can skip that part right there. That's going to drop you in right here. And then you can claim account, get accepted, and then you'll see, you can ask questions with anybody that's in the uh, Discord, be part of the community. You'll see updates changes to possible settings that you can use. It's interesting. I had a couple settings and just caught back down. <clears throat> All right. I think I covered most of the stuff. I wanted to make sure you guys knew how to edit it. That there's other miners in here that you can go and check and look at. Different coins. You can add coins the same way. You need to make sure that if you want to add coins, that you have to add the appropriate wallet address at the top. Like I left this uh, Z coins address up here, but if 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 for whatever reason you wanted to add some other coin, like set, then you could put the, the a different coin name, um, you know XX1 or something. If there if there's some coin out there, name that. You would just do that as wallet address equals and then you put the wall you put the wallet address right there and then when you're calling the variable here if for whatever reason this ethereum one was that address you would just erase this and you would do the percentage and then you do x x and you right there you see the xx1 you hit that 
and then you gotta close the the parenthesis there, and now it's gonna call, if this was like some new coin, it's gonna call that address, and it's gonna use that miner name that you had at the top. That's all that's going on. Multi-miner is that simple. I know it sounds stupid, but this takes quite a bit of time when you're trying to condition it and make it right for your different coins and stuff, so. Yes, so on auto start, if we wanted to make this to where it automatically starts, you can do a couple things. So first off, you go and drag this with a right click and let go, create a shortcut. And this, I usually name this shortcut auto start. Right, And then right click on this and go to properties. And let's say we wanna automatically start that thing that we just did, that number 19. Right on the target, it's gonna put the path here. You need to have that, that 19. You, you do a space and then whatever number you wanna pass it. So if it's 19, if it's hodl pool and it's 33 ubic, you'd use 33 there. You hit apply and then if you double click that, it's automatically firing that up. It's passing that variable to the multi miner and then just starting it. So why does that matter? Why you're like, oh, why? Ooh, who cares about that? Why would I wanna just automatically start that? Well, because you, that is what you will put now into your Windows startup. That if I went into users, let's see here. Oh, it's uh, application data. Which, uh, this is a fresh build laptop, which doesn't have any of this stuff turned on, or I can get to. I'm taking you the long way. Show hidden files. App data. Local, Microsoft. Windows. Not Windows. Is it local? I don't remember. I'm gonna have to look. I have a shortcut to it. Or I think I could do shell. Shell percent startup. Oh, damn it. Shell. There we go. Uh, nope. why it's, that's not working. Anyways. App data. Roaming Microsoft Windows startup. It's, ro it's under roaming. Startup. Right here. That path. So whatever your profile name is, app data, roaming, Microsoft Windows, start menu, program, startup. If you were to move that in so let me open up uh, another little explorer window here downloads multi miner we made that short up that shortcut here if i do that and now if i go and restart this you guys will see the computer restart and automatically fire up the multi miner running that startup routine Well, hopefully this thing doesn't want to do an update. There we go. Okay. So you guys will see this fire up here. It's actually booting. I don't know why it doesn't show that first screen. That's interesting. And I'm not touching anything. We'll just let it run. So it's booting up and there it goes. So now you can see that difference is this auto start right here. So it's automatically running. So you could put that on those machines if it reboots, like for the power outage or something happens and it, it, it goes down, it's gonna automatically start up and then just start the miner right back up for you.
All right. I think we covered most of the stuff with the multi-miner. There's not much more to talk about on it. So you modify the same values for pools, like if I wanted to mine more points to Supernova. Correct. That would be super tech. Yes. You would go in here and edit it, and then you would go to the particular. So if you look at this list and you're like, hmm, Supernova has most of these coins. I would like, I don't want to go to Hodel Pool for Expanse. I want to go to Supernova for there. You would look at number 38. You would scroll down here. When you highlight that 38, it's going to say go to Expanse 1. If you double click that, it's going to highlight that green. You can hold, scroll this down until you see the green. There it is, Expanse Miners. And then you would change this pool information to your particular supernova pool information. And then you'd want to pass the supernova variables. So you see like expanse here is essentially the pool address information and then it goes straight to just your wallet. Well, supernova, you pass a web login because your wallet's actually in supernova. So you would be put, you would just be using your, your reminder login you would be just essentially doing this, copying this and pasting it over this because that's a supernova address right here. That's for Bitcoin gold. You go here, you paste it. And let's say that this is what you were wanting to do, but with expanse, you copy this. You would paste over this because now you're going to supernova. And if this was expanse, EXP, and the only thing we're missing actually on this whole thing right here now is the, uh, we're missing the port number for Expanse for Supernova. So what we can do is right click on this, go to search on the web for Supernova. We can click on Supernova, scroll down, look at Expanse. Here's their Expanse. Hit start mining. That's going to pull us to exp.supernova here. And then here's their commands. So for normal stratum difficulty, 3333, three, 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 we'll copy that. Right here's their address. So that would, we'll just make sure it's that. Copy. And we go to here. Paste. Which just all it did is add the three 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 three, and now this this expanse is to supernova or supernova. Copy that. I do this just for my own uh, edification. That way I don't get confused that which pool it's going to, and just paste it over the menu item, save it, close it. Open it up here, and if I scroll up, and I'll see it now, that expanse going to supernova. I do 38, and now this should fire expanse to supernova. And there it is. You can see it connecting to supernova. Now this was, now this was going to somewhere else just a second ago, but we just changed it. So it is highly editable. We're just giving you the starter. We're giving you the starting runway to be able to get you off the ground like if somebody saw this video and they've never mind they have just a one computer with one graphics card they could literally go out get a wallet download this change one the the wallet item and their miner name and then be able to go out there and do it now this is giving us a weird notification here weird uh and that might be something with uh with supernova and it might be that port that I'm trying to send it through too. But this is the stuff that I do is I'd go and test this. It's not going through right now. So I'd go back to here and look. They want the full string. They just don't want that. So they want the stratum that plus TCP. So we're going to come back in here, edit this. We're going to go back down to expanse. Here's the expanse miner, and we're gonna paste this that whole string in. Paste. So the only difference on this was is they need to know that they're we're using stratum and that it's going across TCP. 
So save, close this, relaunch the multi-miner. That was option 38. And let's see if this passes. This is essentially what we're doing when we're putting this together for you guys is we're going through and then I I get this working on a machine and then I have to go, now this failed to bind because I had it open twice. Let's do this. If you ever get a bind error, more than likely you have another miner running in the background because it's using that same port to report. The same port to report. Those are two different words. Still getting a weird response error. Method notify miner param. Oh, hold on. So we're connecting. This is because I don't have web login and miner name set up on Expanse on Supernova. So I would have to go out to Supernova and log in and create a create a a username. Uh, well, well, once you create a, you log in with your email. That login name is what you'll then pass to the client because once you're in there, once you're in Supernova, you have to create a worker ID, and that worker ID's got to match this right here. This worker name, this worker ID has to match that, and then your worker or your miner name has to match in Supernova. Supernova, I think, is the only one in here. Let's see here. Is that Supernova the only one that's passing that variable? Uh, wallet address, miner web login, and miner name. Supernova, miner name, Supernova. Yeah, the, the web login is only Supernova. Nanopool uses the miner name, too. So... I just don't have expanse on there. That's why we're getting this error. It's because it's saying, hey, I'm connected. You're connecting fine, but it doesn't know who who's doing the mine, who's mining it, because we don't have an account with them. You know, I went out there and set up uh, an expanse one there. But that's essentially what you'd have to do. If you already had your account in there, it would work fine. And as an example, where we'll find one that we do have, Supernova with like Digibyte, I think we have that. Did you buy CC miner for two? So this is connecting to Supernova, and then that connected, and now we're already running because it passed. It connected. It knows that we're we're a miner on here, and it's running. And now we're mining Digibyte on Supernova using this laptop. Any other uh, questions? We'll wrap it up. We're almost right at an hour. Where do you find the download again? Uh, you will find the download on bitsbetrippin.com. We'll take you to uh, down here. You can find it in Discord. You can find it in our resource list. You can click this link. And then this will take you to the Steam it blog post where we have a walkthrough for everybody already laid out showing you essentially all the steps that we just kind of went through where to download notepad how to edit how to edit your stuff there what to edit we have in this steam it post and then essentially all the steps that you've seen and then obviously since we give away this for free and all that stuff we do value your guys's donations if this works out for you um and it doesn't have to be, you guys don't have to just like donate like money or anything like that. I mean, it, it's just doing, going into, uh, just hitting this link to Amazon and just you're doing regular purchase on Amazon. Just, you're doing this a solid, just clicking that. Just your normal activity on Amazon and purchasing, as long as you're bouncing off one of our link, our affiliates, you're, you're helping us out too. So, and then obviously we have all of our, our, our stuff there um, below. We do appreciate if you guys hit this uh steam it post and if you guys can give us an upvote that's always positive and you can always drop a comment and we'll give you guys a, a like there and get you some steam it points so 
Anything else you want to see on there with a the miner and any of that kind of stuff, you guys can leave us suggestions on, on uh, Discord. You can leave, uh, uh, you know, make comments on Steam it. You know, participate. Let us know what you would like to see on there. We're trying to evolve this into a, like a next phase than just a big menu like this. I would like to have it transition to where you can have it more of like a wizard. Like, I have a nvidia card and then the next menu comes up i want to mine you know z coin and then then we have a list of all the available main pools on there so then it, it helps you through it so we're looking at different options to bring in that to the multi miner other coins if you guys can post under this video uh find us on discord post in there under the suggestions part and just let us know what you guys want to see with this and how how we can expand it but we wanted to really limp, you know, bring down the point of entry to where anybody, if you're watching this video, you stumble on it, and you jump through this video, and you get to this point, you can download this and partake in the the GPU mining out there with everybody else and get a little bit of crypto in. I mean, a lot of people go for ROI and try to, you know, and that's that's absolutely fair, you know, to try to get as much as you can and mine the coin that makes the most money at the point in time, but you know. You're just a guy finding this thing, and you can go make a Feather Coin account and just download some Feather Coin, and get quantitative amounts or Psi Coin, where you're getting thousands of coins, and then use that to trade between people, you know, and just trade to your friends. Let them check it out. Download Jack's Wallet on your phone. Start trading some of the currencies and coins, um, and just get used to it. The penalty for failure with just playing with, you know, coins that aren't worth a lot right away gets you exposure to the the industry, lets you understand. What I always tell people is one of the worst things, um, we should be talking on this, like this, one of the worst things that you can do is is go out and spend a lot of money on some Bitcoin and then and then just not have appreciation for the understanding on how it transfers and, you know, uh, you lose a, lose a, uh, your private keys or you do something like that and then now you just lost, you know, hundreds of dollars, you know, go out there, let your computer mine one of these lower hash rate coins get some of it into a wallet and then be able to make that exchange get you know if you have a well a wallet plug-in for like uh ubik and you're using the pyrus wallet and you get you know four or five ubik and you can transfer that between points and stuff like that you get that understanding of the transactional nature of the way cryptocurrency works you know use those coins as your your baseline and then you can earn it you don't even have to go buy it you can just sit there and run your miner get some currency and then understand that transactional standpoint so it's a good way to get your friends into understanding it and how all that kind of transfers and you don't the barrier the barrier of entry is very low um just use your computer a little bit of power um any other questions we'll wrap this one up from earlier i wrote down people had asked a couple things um why did you use notepad plus not just notepad or wordpad uh, nope. If you try to open this up in, uh, in Notepad, I believe it just blows up. Oh, not that. Let's just do this, and let's do... Where's my open? With. Well, it knows that it wants to open it here. Edit. There. If you just edit it, that's what happens. Is it, it's a complex set of strings, and it just Notepad doesn't know how to parse it, so it blows up. You need to have something that can can parse the uh, the more advanced breakdown here. So. I don't know. We can find out um, if you drop into Discord. If you go to our website, bisbeetrippin.com, and you click on Discord go into there and then you can ask you can do an at troubleshooter i think it's troubleshooter or troubleshoot um and then just say hey is this pull down and then kibbles or one of the other folks should uh be able to respond to you i don't know i don't monitor um the hodl pull piece there but we have folks that are in the discord that do and mary had a super chat what to change the hodl coins or am i just making profit like what to change to keep Huh? Um, what to change to hodl coins, or am I just making profit? What what coins to hold, or just make? 
Well, a whole pool. So if you're if you're mining, if you're mining straight to the pool, any pool, any pool on our list here, you are earning those coins. They're not getting converted in any way. You are, you're saving you them up. The yeah, as long as you change the wallet, it's going into your wallet. Um, so the way the way it works is, yeah, you can see this. Is you are mining to a pool this is super weird doing it this way you pool network you are giving your hash power to a pool that pool is getting it from all kinds of people and sending those shares essentially to the network as the proof of work if a pool is awarded a block the pool looks at all the shares that people submit and you it's a numerator and a denominator thing. So if you have 10 people and they all submit one share, they all have 10% of that total numerator of the denominator of the total of that, whatever that block is. So that is gonna pay out to a pool. If you have Supernova as an example, Supernova is gonna to pay to a pool and then you're gonna have a reference amount of currency in that pool. You have to tell Supernova to send it to your local wallet or exchange wallet or wherever else. But it's just, it's gonna be held in the pool. Only Supernova in this setup is set up that way. All the other coins where it says that you have to change in, in our tool here, or and it's predicated on the miner, it has nothing to do with our tool, but if it's mining to your address, then you're doing the same thing. You're giving your hash power to the pool. The pool is doing the math on what your share is based on how many blocks they win, and it's going to send it straight to your wallet address. So then that stuff goes there. All the mining stuff that we have here is that way. We do not include anything that is doing something like nice hash to where nice hash is this same kind of setup besides whatever coin you're getting to the pool address. The pool is automatically selling it for BTC at whatever it can get, and then it's giving you your shared distribution of BTC on relative to how much coins you mine. So you, as far as you care, you don't care what you mine because it's taking a, an algorithm to figure out what's the best to mine at the time, in addition to what people are also buying hash power for on nice hash. So if people are purchasing nice hash power they're just taking your hash power and they're repointing it. And NiceHash is taking that fund that they paid you for, they, they paid NiceHash for, and they're giving you a cut of it. So NiceHash is just using your, your hash power as a pointer. But NiceHash accepts everybody that comes there. So the first part that I said is that NiceHash will take all the hash power it can get. And as long as it has a, a counterparty to purchase that hash power, it's gonna keep it busy. Otherwise, NiceHash is just going against the network for whatever the most profitable coin is and selling it on an exchange anyways. And there's a lot of a, a lot of different pooled places that do the uh, mining pool hub, which is one of the other tools inside of uh, one of the mining pools that we have in here, does the same thing. Is they, they take all your hash power and you're getting just paid back in BTC because it's automatically selling it on an exchange. So uh, most of the stuff we have set up in here, by and large, is mining for the coin. Even if it's going to nice hash, even if it's going to mining pool hub, we have it to where you're getting back that coin. Um, you can put the credentials in there to like mining pool hub's main um, address, and then based on your count that you have set up on there, you can have them automatically sell that coin that you're getting and convert it to BTC for you. And you're going to get it back to you. You're going to get paid back out to your BTC address, your Bitcoin address. So. Hopefully that answered the question. Maybe that didn't lose everybody. I'm looking at Miss BBT and she's doing something else right now. Are you on the phone? No. Oh. So if that if that wraps it up, I think she's disengaged. I'm gonna get. We'll wrap this. We're about ten minutes over. Do we have any other super chats we didn't miss? Excellent. All right. Yep. 
uh, that's the worldwide audience. So, um, folks, that, fo yeah, okay. <laughs> so, thanks. And uh, if you guys uh, drop us a line on Discord, that's great. We'll uh, wrap this one up. Hopefully this was uh, beneficial and good.